If you don't like the sound of Logic Pro's built-in metronome, then this video is gonna be for you. Today, I'm gonna to show you everything you need to know about Logic's metronome, from adding subdivision, to changing the sound, to even triggering your own samples. I'm gonna cover everything, and by the end of this video, you're gonna be able to confidently get any click or metronome sound that you want. I've been using Logic for close to a decade, and the one thing that still really gets on my nerves is the click track, and I know from talking to beginners or people who are newer to Logic, that's also a complaint of theirs too. It just doesn't sound good. It's this weird like pulse thing. So today I'm gonna to show you how to add subdivision, change the sound of it, all the things. So if that sounds interesting to you, please make sure you like and subscribe and I'm gonna get right to it. So if you're not familiar with the metronome or how to get to it, um, up here at the top, you've got two buttons that pertain to the metronome. The one on the right, the little triangle with the stick looking thing, that's the metronome. When it's turned on, you're gonna hear some sort of click or pulse when you are playing or recording. So if I hit play right now, you're gonna hear that weird ticking sound. Um, if you turn it off, then you don't hear it. The button to the left of that is the count in. So this is going to be kind of pre-roll. So if I hit record right now, it's going to back up the playhead one measure and then start click and roll from there. Start. If the click is off, but the count in is on, same thing. When you hit record, it's gonna back up a measure, give you four clicks, and then the click will stop right when the count in is done. Gone. So those are two helpful ways to quickly dial in like when you want the click to happen. If you right click on the count in, you can tell it how many bars. So if you want a two bar count in, one bar count in, um, I don't know what that is. Is that a beat? Yes. So all of these are subdivisions of a bar. So four beats of four is going to give you four clicks. Uh, it's kind of confusing, so I would just stick to bars, but you've got that there if you want it. Usually I leave it on one bar. Over on the other side, if you right click this, you can go to metronome settings. And this is where it gets fun. Up here under options, simple mode is basically like you turn it on, you turn it off, no matter what you're doing. If it's on, it plays. If it's off, it doesn't. If you turn off simple mode, you have two checkboxes, one for click while recording and one for click while playing. And so if you want it to only use the click when you're recording and then immediately when you go to playback, the click turns off, you can unclick, uncheck click while playing. Um, so this is going to let you have click when you're recording like that. And then as soon as you play back, the click is gone. That's really helpful if you're working with an artist and like they wanna record with the click, but then when you're checking to see if the vibe's right on the take, the click is getting in the way. You can turn it off right there. So if you check this only during count in button, then it'll still only click while recording, but you also have to be recording with the count in turned on. Um, in other words, it's confusing. Um, that's kind of weird, so I would just not check that box. But you can definitely check click while recording and uncheck click while playing if you want it to automatically turn off on playback. Or you can keep it on simple mode and then just toggle this button here. The other thing to note is with simple mode turned off, there's two functions for this click button up here. So there's the playback click. Um, basically, you know, we're playing back. The click is not turned on, but we can click it and it's gonna automatically check that click while playing box for us. Same thing on recording, if we hit record um, and uncheck it, then it's gonna uncheck the click while recording. So that's another way, if you uncheck simple mode, you can still control the click without being in the click settings. Just a bunch of weird options there, but once you figure out what you like, you can just leave it on that. And I believe these click options are global. So once you change stuff, it's gonna carry over to all your projects, which is nice. So I'm gonna do, for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna leave it on simple mode, so no matter what we're doing, you're hearing the click. All right, this next one, polyphonic clicks, is better explained after this lower section, so I'm gonna come back to polyphonic clicks. Down here in this source section, you have basically note events. So all of these, bar, group, B, and division, are times when you might want a click. So the bar is right on your downbeat, like a new bar. So if I uncheck these and go ahead and hit play, you're only gonna hear a click on the one of each bar. So if we're in 4-4 time, that means every four beats we enter a new bar and you get a new click. So this is what that sounds like. 
right? You just have the one on the downbeat. Beat, however, is every single beat. So if you're in 4-4 time, you're gonna be getting those quarter note clicks. That's what most people are used to. And this is where polyphonic clicks comes in because polyphonic means multiple notes at once. If polyphonic clicks is turned on, then all of these, think of these as like a, a drum track, right? They're all playing at the same time. So you're gonna have the bar play at the bar. You're gonna have the beat play every beat, even on the ones where there's a bar. So what that turns out to is multiple sounds playing at the same time. When you turn it off, you just get one per beat. So in other words, on your bar, on your downbeat, you get the bar click. And then on the beat, you get the beat click, but you don't get the beat click when the bar click happens. It's really confusing, and once I show you how to change sound source, that's gonna make more sense. But that's basically what's going on here. Um, you can change the note that's triggered. So right now it's an F sharp five, and the beat is a C five. That's great, that doesn't mean much to you on this weird click, but once we start to trigger samples, you're gonna to need to know that. Velocity is basically the volume of each hit, so if you want the bar to be like super loud, you can pull it up to 127, and then I'll play. So now like that's super loud, we can pull the beat down. If you just want a really accented downbeat. Um, so that's how you can control that. Also down here, you can control roughly the tone and the volume of the click. So if you just wanna make some tiny adjustments, that's where you do it, but you're still triggering that same, it's called Klopfgeist. Um, I don't know what that means, but it's a click generator basically. So you can turn the tonality down, you get this really like hard tick, um, or you can turn it up, and you kind of get more of a um, ringy kind of click. There's more settings once you open up the Klop, Klopgeist. That's really hard to say if you haven't tried to say it, the Klopgeist plugin. So that's what you do there. If you wanna change the output of the click, say you're running backing tracks live and you want your content going out to one and two, and then you want your click going out to three and four, you can change that right here, assuming you have other outputs set up. Uh, right now I'm streaming to OBS, so I have to only have one and two, but if you have your regular like Focusrite or something set up that has multiple outputs and you have that selected as your audio device, you'll see those options there. MIDI click, I'm not gonna dive too much into this, but this is if you wanna send click out to an external source. So if you got like the boss, like Dr. Beat thing, and you want that to be your click track for Logic, you can send a click out. You have to select the MIDI channel and then select the port it goes out, but you can do it. Um, and then again, you can set the note that triggers and the velocity and all of that right there, same as you can for your audio click. That's all your kind of important stuff you need to know. Now the fun part is dialing in a different click sound. So by default, when you open up a project, the click is invisible, right? It's just this sound that happens from somewhere and you have some settings, but you don't know what's going on. So if you hit X to open the mixer, and when the mixer opens, you're gonna see the tracks window. And that's not that helpful because there's nothing there, right? It's your one instrument track and your stereo out and your master. If you go to all, you will suddenly see this click track. And this is what you're controlling from the metronome setting. So let me open this thing up and you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, and I'll open it up next to the metronome settings. So in this click thing, you have your tone right here and your tone slider in the metronome settings is the tonality slider in the Klopgeist plugin. So, you know, if you want it super ringy, you pull that up, you can pull it down. Um, the damp uh, shortens the response. So if I pull this up, you're kind of dampening it, I like putting a towel over it, basically. That's kind of helpful if you want. Again, volume is volume. Um, that's pulling your main fader of the channel up and down. See it down there? Um, so that's where those things relate to. They're not just like magical things that you can't get to. It's all controlling like tangible things. What I want you to do now is remove Klopgeist. And I like to use Ultra Beat for this just because it's the most simple and you can drag and drop samples in or use the percussion samples that are included, whatever you want. Basically now we are sending an F sharp five to Ultra Beat and we're sending a C5 to Ultra Beat. 
And so by default, that's just this, this synth bass up really high. Right, I'm gonna pull this up a little bit. That's not very good. So what I like to do is go up here and pick a different drum kit. And my favorite drum bank for this is just the percussion bank because you get a lot of like non-drum sounds that are still really tight and percussive. So now you've got all of these. That's a good one, that cowbell. You got a tambourine, a shaker. Like all this stuff. Um, and what you can do now is kind of click through them, figure out like, okay, I kind of like that. I kind of like this one. So for example, I really like the cowbell. I think that's a good downbeat. So this starts right here. This is C1 and then you work your way up. So like C1, C sharp one, D1, all the way up. Go ahead and take your bar and I'm going to put mine on E1. So you can just come right in here and type E1. And now your click is going to trigger the cowbell in ultra beat. Okay, so now we've got our down beats. Next, we want our regular beat like all the other beats. So I'm going to find another one that I like. I like the wood block, so that is B1. If you don't know the keys of the keyboard, just come in here and start at C1 and work your way up and you'll cycle through sounds. So C1 is the lowest and then if you click this up one, it's going to take you to the next key. So you can just kind of cycle through that way if you don't know the keys. But I want this wood block, so I'm going to keep hitting up until I find the wood block. There it is. So now I've got a downbeat and like a regular beat. Division is the space in between the beats. So this is like the 16th note, the really fast. Um, by default, I don't know where this is set and I rearranged all these when I was prepping for the video. So I've already picked this to be D sharp two, which is this right here, this little block. Um, and I also really like the block for it. So I'm gonna leave it there. This is where if you uncheck polyphonic clicks, you'll start to just have the bar and then the beat and then the division all separately. It could be preferable if like all of them playing at once feels too busy. Finally, there's group and I waited to talk about this because it's kind of a more situational one, but say you're in a time signature more like six, eight that has kind of a weird section in between, right? You got your one, two, three, four, five, six, like that one, that's the group. So if I turn this on, uh, I have it set to trigger this maraca, but you can click, you know, there's another wood block up there or a tambourine, whatever you want, it doesn't super matter. And now this is going to trigger on kind of the off bar. It's weird, just if you want extra division or if you want extra kind of subdivision, subgrouping, you can turn it on. It's hard to explain what it does, but I'll show you. So it's kind of that, that off, right? So if you're in a weird time signature, you'll have that. Otherwise, like in 4-4, it just doesn't play. So good stuff to know. Once you're all done with this, you can actually save a preset. You gotta go back to your mixer and you can close out metronome settings and go ahead and go to this setting and save channel strip setting as. And then I made this one called default click. So go ahead and save that. You gotta replace it if there's one there. Now you've saved all that ultra beat in default click so you can recall it whenever you want. If you wanna drag and drop your own samples in there, you can initiate a kit in ultra beat that's just called drag and drop sample so if you go into drum kits and go to drag and drop samples it's literally just a completely empty thing and then you can go in your hard drive and just drop samples in there so if you have a sampled click you really like or a wood block or whatever you can drop it in there same thing and then assign your metronome settings to trigger that now the other thing i want to show you is how to actually like if you want to automate the click or anything like that 
you have to create a track for it. So if you go open the mixer and find your click, it got changed, but I'll relabel it click. And then just hit Control T, or you can right click on it and hit Create Track. Then it's gonna drop a actual track into your workspace. So now you can actually like see it. And like say the end of my song is at beat four, it's a really long song. You can go right there and grab a section and just pull it down. And so now the click is gonna automatically turn off on beat four or measure four off. Um, so that's really helpful if you wanna like slow down at the end of a song or you need the click to stop for whatever reason, that's how you do it. The cool thing is once you get your settings the way you want, you can open a new project and populate it in very quickly. So let me close this one. Don't save. All right, so we got a new project. And then by default, it doesn't load your channel strip setting, but it does save your metronome settings. So all those assignments you made are already there. And so then all you need to do is go in, go to all, go to your click, go to setting and hit default click. And now you're back to where you were. And if you wanna just save like this starting point with your custom click as a template, you can do that if you go to file, save as template. So we'll just call this click start, right? Save that. And then if I close project, don't save, and then go new from template. Hello, new from template, project templates, no, nope, my templates. And then you have click start right there and you go ahead and choose, and then boom, there's your project, there's your click. So that's like how to fix it so you don't have that terrible, weird, pingy, like pulsy kind of click, because it's really hard to follow. It's a lot easier to follow like a cowbell and a shaker. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any more questions about the click or how to dial in specific things, feel free to reach out in the comments. If you'd like to learn more about me and the services I provide, I've got a link to my website down in the description so you can go check that out. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and make sure you like and subscribe.